guys, this is Duncan from dunksweb.com and here we're showing Google navigation in the Samsung Galaxy S2. Now those of you who know about this first Samsung Galaxy S, some people were having issues with the GPS, but this seems to be absolutely fine. It locks on as quick, if not quicker, than the iPhone 4. But one issue with this is that it's downloading everything from the internet. So obviously you need to have a signal for it to download the map that you're looking at, um, otherwise you're gonna have problems. Because if you have like the iPhone 4 and you have like a piece of software like TomTom, uh, that already has all the maps available offline, whereas this doesn't, this relies on the internet. And also, if you're stuck out somewhere that, without a signal and you need to get somewhere, it's again, it's relying on the internet and you're not going to be able to get the directions, whereas you could with TomTom, because it's all available offline. So you can see a switch between uh, 3G and high speed 3G, and uh, at the top it shows the next direction we need to do, so in 0.1 miles uh, we need to uh, move on the roundabout, we're going all the way around the roundabout and coming back. Um, I'm going to move off to the wrong direction when we get there because at the moment we're in uh, quite a lot of traffic. Uh, it's in rush hour at the moment so there's a lot of traffic around uh, which allows me to talk to you about this. Now you can tap on this and uh, have a look at the next thing you need to do. I've got this navigating somewhere random but as you can see it sort of goes along the route which is quite nice. But obviously you need to route back. I wouldn't recommend doing this while you're driving. <laughs> but uh, I need to thank my camera woman who's next to me as well. Uh, you see this little button here that just uh, showed? That is the passenger mode. So you can actually have walking directions to where you want to be. So it's very useful if you've got it in your pocket and you need to know where to go. Um, if I move back to this. So it's basically running Google Maps, but it's running it in 3D. Um, with the uh, little navigation icon on there as well. Uh, at the bottom it shows what uh, road we're currently on and on the bottom left it shows us how long it's going to take to get to our destination. So it's not as fully fledged as the sat nav you'd find on the iPhone or because uh, TomTom I don't believe is available for Android. Uh, the other sat nav would tell you of course uh, points of interest which you can get on here, I'll demo that in a second. Uh, but it doesn't show you the current speed you're going, it won't alert you of any speed cameras or anything like that. So it's a basic navigation system, but of course this is provided with the phone, so it's absolutely free. So if I go ahead, uh, of course you can pinch to zoom in and out, and then zoom with these buttons here. Now if I go back, and we'll get rid of the route for the minute, I'm going to go into uh, maps this time. And, uh, oh no, no, that was just a, a petrol station we're going to. There we go, this is the places area. You can also get to that with its own menu item. And uh, you can basically say, where's the nearest petrol station? And it will do it for you. And it will show you, and it will show you reviews. So we're at the moment trying to get to Tesco's. I'm going to try and go the wrong way again. But you can go on it, and you can see you have the option of showing it in maps, giving the route guidance, calling the place, or you've got some other options, such as sharing it. If you have Google Buzz, which I'm sure all of you use, <laughs> then uh, you can get that running as well. But it's, a, it's very good in finding places that are around you, but again, it's all relying on the internet, so you have to have that internet connection available. Because the GPS is also running through the cellular data as well, or I think some places call it the assisted GPS, which uses the phone signal as well as um, the GPS signal in order to lock you, lock you down in place. So you can see we've got it in the 2D view here. Uh, you've got the layers as well, so if you want to see what the traffic, like, traffic is like. So surely it should tell me that it's very, very busy along here. Yes, as you can see, we've got red here. We've got some road works that is going on nearby. Um, so this has really backed it all up, all the way up here. Um, we're quite near a dual carriageway, so I may have to stop the video in order to show you. But one thing I do like about this is when it gets near to the destination, it shows you a photo of the destination. It does it like a street view thing, um, which is pretty cool. And it shows you where you pretty much need to turn or what you're looking for. So. Uh, what we'll do is we'll stop the video now because we're still sitting in traffic. So uh, you guys will see this in action in a very short while. So thanks for watching this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like these videos. And thanks again. Okay, so what we've done is we've, um, we've sat in a car park and we've put the destination in as the car park, uh, which is near a Tesco store. And uh, we, it basically sort of jiggled about for a little bit and then said we've reached our destination. And as you can see, it's showing that picture I was talking about where... Uh, where we're actually looking, which is kind of nearby. It doesn't show the front of the store, but um, it sort of shows where you are and where you're turning in. So it's pretty good. Um, the next thing we'll show is just a quick look around uh, driving in uh, like a normal situation and also taking a wrong turn. Okay, so we're now in a typical driving situation. I'm just moving off now. Turn left onto Ren Avenue, then turn left onto Robin Drive. I do sound like a driving instructor while I do this. So at the end of the road, I'm going to turn right. So I'm going to mirror, mirror, signal right, and then I'm going to slow down into first, and then I'm going to look both ways, <laughs> and there's a car coming, so I'm going to stop. 
and I'm going to go the wrong way just to see how quickly it can recalculate because obviously it's pulling it from the internet. So now I'm going to move off into second, move towards the end of the road. And at the end of the road again, I'm going to signal right and look both ways. So there we go, it's rerouting now. I'm at the end of the road, so now where am I going? Now I don't even know. Come on, phone. Also, I've noticed that the GPS is a bit of a, a, bit of a battery suck. Alright, so now I'm going left, am I? Okay, so I'll just signal right. I'm actually going to go left to follow it. Turn left onto London Road. In a quarter of a mile, turn right onto Scrivener Drive. So, it does follow you very well, actually. You can see how smooth it is as I'm going along the road. I'm going along at about 25 or more, because we're near, um, near a lot of houses. It's going to be a bit bumpy as well. My apologies, that's the uh, road conditions I have at the moment. But it's following it very well as we go along. But it's just the fact that it's pulling stuff from the internet that's causing it to be a little bit slower than a normal sat-nav would be. We should have all those maps offline, so... I guess that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching this video.